Hello and welcome back to another Southern 8099 video production. As promised in my last video, what we're going to start doing today is the, the build on this on the commissary, uh, excuse me, the Walters, Walters Commissary Freight Transfer Building. Uh, probably going to do this in about three parts. Uh, uh, we're in three segments rather, not necessarily three parts. I'm going to try to do it all in one video, but uh, we'll go through uh, prep work, uh, which will include the painting. Then we'll do a little painting detail work, and then we'll get into the assembly and the uh, final touch-up work on it. So uh, this is not a very complicated kit. We should be able to run through this pretty quick. Probably could be done, you know, if you weren't too particular about what you were doing, probably could be done in an afternoon, painting and everything. But uh, the good thing about this kit is, this one does not go on the, uh, uh, my railroad club uh, layout. This is going to go on my layout. So we'll get to see this one go from box to kit right to the layout. So uh, let's get started. Okay, the directions are pretty simple. Um, two pages, the front and the back. Got an exploded view, view of the building here. Uh, without the uh, loading dock here on the bottom and uh, the uh, to the completion here in the back which uh, you know finishes up your detail work uh, this building also could be expanded if you wanted to with a, another kit you could double the size or increase it uh, in its length again by another half so uh, it could you could make a pretty good sized building out of it so but anyway anytime you look at directions and they're, and they're this simple that's always a good sign uh, one other thing I always do, uh, it's, it's my, I've got my plastic here, my glass, uh, I always leave it in the plastic because this, this stuff has a, uh, a tendency when you're moving around everything gets scratched up so I just always leave it in the plastic until I'm ready to use it and uh, then I take it out and then cut it up and, and, and you know apply it as, I, as the directions uh, tell me to. So uh, I, Everything seems to be fairly well simple. Uh, nothing too complicated about building. Uh, now this comes in. Uh, the, here's your decals, uh, which I'm glad to see this. Now this my uh, layout is so uh, I, I call it the Amnicola Southern. Get that get that glare off of it. Uh, but this works out fine because this, there's a branch, there's a road or a street that runs off of Amnicola Highway here where the railroad runs. This is known as Riverside Drive. So. Uh, this will fit in just fine. I can, instead of just calling this the commissary building, I can call this the, uh, put both of these decals on there, call it the Riverside Commissary Building or Riverside Warehouse and Moving, and uh, just it, it, this will fit right in perfect with the layout. So that's, uh, I'm very pleased to see that. Uh, all our parts are here. Got one, two, three, four sprues, so there's not a lot of parts. So, uh, we're in good shape, should be able to get this done fairly quick, so uh, let's get started with the prep work. Now here's something I highly recommend, uh, and I've only seen uh, one other person do this, and I just happened to notice it the other day when uh, he commented on one of my videos, and I went back to look at his video, who, by the way, happened to be building this same kit, and I just noticed that he did this too. But these are these are just little old aluminum cake pans, baking pans, I guess is what you call them. Um, they were... I got these two, got them at Walmart, they were like $2.98 for the pair, but the thing about it is, you don't wind up with just two of them, you get the clear tops that go with them. And in this case, I don't know how they managed to do it, but they gave me three tops, so <laughs> I'm, I'm one ahead. Uh, now this, this comes in handy for two reasons. Number one, these make good good bins to put your, uh, put this out of the way here, it's good to put your parts in once you take them off your sprue keeps them all together. Uh, I have a tendency to want to sort mine by the way I'm going to paint uh, based on color and uh, and then put, uh, I generally have another one that's a little smaller than this to put my smaller parts in that's assuming I do take them off the sprue but still regardless these, these are very very good and they're inexpensive you can reuse them and I, another good thing about these is uh, get this out of the way I have to do my painting out in my garage and sometimes it has a tendency to get very very dusty and uh, so I don't like to leave things laying around out there that are that I've just painted, uh, a particular spray painted because they, you know you have a tendency to collect dust or hair or whatever just happens to be out in the garage. So uh, let's just say I was going to paint this uh, uh, little palette here. 
once I get it painted, assuming the part's not too big, I can set that down over the top, over the top of my part that I've painted, and uh, we're protected from dust. So, like I say, you can get the, uh, you know, I've got two, this one came with three. Uh, I've got another set of there, but they're, like I say, they're like three bucks a piece. They're reusable over and over and over. Uh, if you bend them, it ain't no big deal. It's, you know, uh, they're, they're just a great little thing to have around. And uh, like I said, uh, I saw BNSF 9382 do this the other day. It is, and, and it just dawned on me. I thought, that would be something to pass along to, to you because it, it sure does come okay, in. Hey, we've got everything uh, cut off the sprue that I need to cut off uh, and just show you exactly uh, how I did that. We Some things I leave on the sprue. If I if it's not uh, absolutely necessary that it be, it be taken off independently, I leave it on there because I'll be able to paint this and uh, the, by leaving it on the sprue, accomplishes two things. I've still got part numbers here that you know I don't get confused. Of course, wouldn't have to worry about this. There's just not a lot of parts here anyway. But you got part numbers here and how many you've got. Plus, if I need to do any, flip it over and do any painting or something like that, I can I can do that by handling the sprue and not have to handle the part. Uh, uh, these are these are the doors that go inside to the warehouse. Uh, you can see windows here. Done the same thing. Uh, don't worry too much about that because the biggest part of this window is support from the inside and you don't you won't see that all you'll see is just this inside frame so it's just the only thing I have to worry about getting painting is that the rest of it is just there to, to will pop me from the inside and you won't see that and once again I've got part number there and if I need to flip it do whatever with it after I've painted it's uh, I don't have to worry about handling the parts and we've got uh, some more here same thing part number I can flip it um, so that's uh, that sure does make it convenient. Now here I've got to let me flip this. Over. This uh, this is your dock floor and your uh, your overhang that's going to come outside. These these, these are the parts that will be painted, probably in uh, something a gray or maybe a, a tan color uh, that you can weather and uh, uh, you know make it look like it's been sitting outside for a while. But this this will be the exposed part. And these are the these are the ones that are going to be uh, like I say probably gray to silver or something like that. So. Uh, I'll take these now, um, especially the parts I'm going to paint to begin with. I'll get those sanded down, get the edges sanded down, uh, and I will do a, a, a test fit after I get them sanded down, just to make sure everything's going to be uh, everything's going to fit good and snug, because these things have a tendency to it's, it's going to fit in there. Yeah, it's going to fit in there. That's, corners like that so this is this is rather thin it's this not gonna be hard to hard to deal with because it's uh, it's not bold or anything so, which makes it that makes me very happy so uh, yeah we'll I'll get this sanded get it washed take it outside we'll paint it and then we'll get uh, the next thing we do is uh, get started on the assembly and then we will uh, after that we'll get started working on the detail work and I want to do a Quite a bit of weathering on this one because this this building is going to be uh, look will have been sitting outside for a considerable amount of time so it it, it should show some wear and tear uh, so I've got to get to pick up a few things to get that done but uh, right now let's wash these or sand them get them washed and uh, go do some painting now we're going to get down into uh, the, the detail work on the paint. Uh, now what I've got here, I've mixed myself some just ordinary acrylic paint. Uh, you can see it right there. But anyway, I've, I've got about a 50-50 mix, the white, and uh, I use alcohol. Alcohol seems to break it down a little bit. It makes it flow a little bit better. So uh, this is one of my end panels. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to fill in the grout here and, and, and uh, bring, out, uh, bring out the brickwork in this. So let's... Uh, uh, let's, let's see how this works here. I've got three brushes here I've been using. And the reason I use the 50-50 mix is it, uh, I want it to be runny. Almost, almost to the point where it drips off my brush. Because that way it will, two things, it, it, it uh, fills in the cracks real easy. It fills in the brickwork real easy. And the uh, alcohol helps break the paint down a little bit. And when it, uh, it it evaporates, the alcohol will evaporate, 
and all it does is leaves your paint. So uh, that's that's the reason I use a 50/50 mix. I'm sure, depending on what uh, what you're doing, the uh, mixture that you use will be a uh, be a little bit different. But don't be afraid to try it. Going to get it on there. Get a good coat of it on there. Going to have to mix me some more paint here in just a minute. Okay, now we've got that. Now I'll take my other brush and I just want to just want to pull some of that paint off. Also noticed that a uh, when you're dealing with brick, an up and down uh, brush stroke will, will make it look a little bit better. It doesn't get so streaky. Of course, that could be uh, dependent upon your paint. Pull as much off as I can. All I really want to do here is just uh, accent the brick. I, I don't want to turn the brick white, so. And that's, that's the reason I like to use the alcohol. The alcohol will kind of hang around there a little bit. And so that, I know, it's looking let him, let him, let's get that up here where I can. Really brings out the highlight in the brick. I, I, I think this does more for building than anything. Because now it becomes a, becomes a structure instead of just a kit. Because now the, uh, the brick's accentuated and it, it just, uh, I think that really does wonders for a kit. Now I did this, I did this one just a while ago when I got them side, let me put them side by side here. It's hard to tell, but that uh, see it really brings out the brick. Really brings that out. So um, got another wall or two here to do. So uh, let me finish that up, and we'll uh, we'll get started on something else. Now let's work on the. Uh, lower access or the uh, platform floor uh, access doors uh, in and out of the warehouse. Now if you'll notice um, when they come in the kit they're solid. The doors are not uh, are like this so I, I took the liberty to cut these out because what I'm going to do is put a uh, put a floor in on the back side where I can uh, have a little little interior scene going on there so uh, this was this was very easy to do. I did it with an exacto knife uh, I cut the just cut these two out, and then took uh, took a little file and just uh, filed off the edges, and made it square. Uh, this one is just uh, you know a partial uh, partial up. Uh, another one a uh, completely uh, completely out, and another one partial up. So uh, now we're going to weather these just a little bit. Okay, what you see here now is I have taken uh, taken this door, this panel right here, and uh, have uh, I've got a black wash. You could do this with acrylic acrylic paint, but this is uh, what I'm actually using. Is this? Uh, excuse me, uh, the the Vallejo. Let me get that right there. Uh, model wash for dark vehicles works pretty good for something like this. And again, I've mixed it with alcohol and thinned it out quite a bit, but uh, I have added that to the. I have uh, washed the doors here, 
not the frame, just just these doors to give an example. Here's one that hasn't been done, and you, I guess you can. I hope you can see the difference there. And uh, what it does is, is it just brings out the uh, uh, the doors there. It just makes them kind of stand out a little bit without having to paint the frames. So uh, again, it's a it's a wash. You can do it with a real, uh, acrylic paint. Just thin it real well. Uh, it's you know it's better to be honestly it's better to be too thin to begin with because you can always adjust it if you get it too thick it becomes a problem always start out on the thin side and you can always adjust it to make it a little bit thicker and, and make it uh, make it adjust to your color uh, that you'd like once I got through with the black wash I came in with a, a little bit of rust color just uh, these are these would be aluminum doors uh, so I, I just came in and just a little uh, just a little touch of uh, of a rust color, a brown, and again a 50-50 mix, and uh, kind of highlighted that. I, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not, but uh, from from my viewpoint here, they, uh, you know, it re it really makes the the door really stand out. And with the panels in the wall, this is uh, what they're going to look like. It's going to really look good when I get them all in there together. But yeah, that's uh, that's what they're going to look like. Now we've got everything painted, I think, and now we can start assembly. Now as I told you before, the reason I don't cut everything off the sprue uh, necessarily is because uh, you just never know what uh, how much of it's going to be exposed, but from experience I can tell you that, that the windows, the only thing you're going to see is, these, uh, is the frames, so we're going to, they'll, they'll sit right in there like that. And they, these things kind of just snap in. You have to hold them in when you glue them. But that's, uh, we're going to get that in there. And uh, we've got uh, several here to do. So let's get the windows in and then we'll, uh, we'll come back and start something else. And now, with the exception of the dock uh, and the roof for, or the overhang for the dock, we've got the front panel assembled here. Now, if, if you'll notice uh, two, uh, two things here. Number one, uh, I've got a paper towel here, and I always work on a paper towel because it, I don't want anything scratching my surface, either front or back. So it's just a habit I got into of of uh, the way I assemble my, my kits. And flip it over here. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I did I did paint the uh, back side of mine black, uh, primarily because I am going to light this building. Uh, generally. Uh, a white uh, background is uh, reflects light a little bit better, but in this case the building's not that big and there wouldn't be that much lighting anyway, so uh, we have her painted black. While I've got this on my mind, I just, I just happened to think about, about the glue. But this is uh, Tester's Plastic Cement. Now, normally when you get this stuff, it is very, very thin and it, uh, you know, it, it hits the low spots and the cracks very, very well. Uh, but sometimes you just don't want to uh, want your glue to run that thin, run that quick, or run that thin. So what I have done, I've got two bottles of this. This one is uh, about a 75% mixture of the uh, of the what originally came in the bottle, and I took a tube of uh, just regular testers plastic cement, like you you know like we saw used to put model airplanes and everything to go with, and. Uh, squeezed about 25% uh, uh, of, of this bottle in there and mixed it up that way it uh, it still and, and, and it stirs up and it mixes real well um, I still got a, a, a you know a pretty thin little a mixture of glue uh, but it's a little bit more controller uh, uh, controllable so it's uh, that, that's what I use for my glue now these are the two end panels I've got those done with the uh, window frames in there. I still haven't uh, put the glass in behind them yet because what I want to do when I get the assembly done here is I'm going to put a uh, a flat uh, a cover finish uh, on the thing because uh, so that uh, uh, kind of take out some of the glare and make the, like the, make the building look just a little bit older. Now here is the side door uh, that will be installed. Uh, I don't know if you can tell it uh, from the camera or not but uh, Again, here what I did was uh, I used a 50% mixture of uh, black wash and some alcohol, and just and just filled in the uh, interior side of the door there, just to kind of give it uh, some definition, so that this just doesn't look like a gray door sitting up against the building. 
Now we're just doing a little little detailed paintwork on my seals around my, my window frames. Don't get in a hurry when you do this, just kind of get your small brush and just kind of work up and down. Best way to do it. If you get a little spill over or touch it, don't worry about it. It's just the nothing is perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. When they put a building up brand new, it's not perfect. So I don't worry about it. If I get a little little paint here, a little paint there. This is just so obvious. I don't worry about it. And I'm using a square end brush here too, by the way. There we go. And generally when you're using these acrylic paints like this, you generally have to go over it twice. It's uh, especially once you, once you spray painted and the acrylic dries. It you know it, it it'll leave a little little space. But uh, I don't worry about that too much. I just think it just adds a little character to the to the building. So uh, let me finish this up. Okay, just a tip here on your uh, painting when you're doing window seals or something I've. Uh, found out it helps me a lot. I always start in the center like right here and work myself out to the, to the edges uh, and I always, I always get you know a fair amount of paint on my brush but if I start in the center I kind of spread the paint out as I go instead of putting it all on one end. Do that again for you and show you what I'm talking about. So right here see I got a Good little amount of paint right there, and I can just kind of spread it out towards the corners. Makes it a lot easier to do, and looks a whole lot better. Now I've got just a just a little bit of weathering chalk here, or really what it is is just pastel uh, that we're going to put on here with a. And again, you use a soft brush. And you probably cannot tell it from the video, but we sure does make this, this makes that brick come out with that, uh, with the white mortar, and then you, then you come across the top of it with, uh, with, a, with a darker color. Oh, that makes all the difference in the world, isn't it? Very pleased with it so far. Now we can start doing a little assembly. Uh, put in a couple of windows here just to show you how, how this one is done. Then we'll uh, then I'll go ahead and get the rest of them and we'll come back to something else. Now I'm real sparing with the glue here because this. I have a, I, of all the things about building a kit, I dislike it's these windows because I always have a hard time keeping the keeping glue off of them. Let's do a couple of them here, and the glue, the glue can be kind of set. The one thing I always do when I put my windows in, I always clean one side of them, or, or the side that's going to go up against the frame, because uh, I don't like to get my fingerprints on them. And then here's always the tough part about getting them on there just so that they fit right. There we go. Hmm. Didn't even get any on the, didn't even smear too bad. Good. So that's uh, nothing to that really, it just uh, takes a little time to do it. Now 
only have two pillars. Uh, here's one of them. You got one that goes on each end, and they uh, those are there to uh, attach your sidewalls to. So let's get this on here. Try not to get too much glue on that because I don't want it to leak out on the on the building. You also got to, on our roof. This is going to go right here. You can see these. You can probably see these holes, but you got to make sure they all line up. I want to make sure this gets on there straight and level because we've got a sidewall that's going to attach to this too. See, it just, it just does not want to stay on there. There we go. Might have to hold it there a little bit and let it dry. Got two of these to put on, so I'll put the other one on. Okay, now that our pillars are dry, then we put, uh, we've got two sides to put on. Go ahead and put this, I've got this one glued. Got it set there, gonna let it sit for a little bit. Uh, then we come in and put the other side on. Now the next step when this dries is uh, we'll, we'll put it on the base. Now we've got a, we've got a concrete, uh, a set of concrete steps that goes right here. So this will, uh, see which side my door's on. So, the base will go in behind like this. So as soon as this dries, uh, we'll get this base on there. Now I've got the sides on uh, the building uh, and mounted to the base. Turn this around there where you can... This is, uh, like I say, a background building so that's, there's no back wall. And turn around here and you see you've got the other, other end panel right here, other wall. And if you remember when uh, when we were doing the uh, prep work and everything, I cut these cut these uh, the doors out, and I uh, just came around here on the back side and did a little did a little styrene work here and made me a platform in there. So now I will have uh, I can I can have some uh, products in there, forklifts, and people hanging around. So uh, add a little personality to it. And that's, uh, let me tip this back here, maybe you can see a little bit better. The lighting in here, I don't know if it's just not too great. I, I have a problem with it, so. But that's what we look like so far. As you see, we now have the dock portion attached to the building. So now we'll take, uh, we'll take the bumper pads here and uh, secure them to the to the kit per the instructions. All right, we've got one of the bumper pads installed. They come in, there's two of them, so we'll, uh, we'll put the other one here right beside it.
uh, a lot of times on these steps uh, when you have these railings these little small railings like this that go into the sit down these holes on there the when you paint them the paint paint fills the holes up and you can't get your rails down there so what I do is just take my exacto knife and the point of it and just clean out the hole uh, and I have on occasion taken a hat pin and uh, hold it and heat the end of it and just take the take the hot pin and just kind of push it through there and it'll it opens that hole up so that's a that's, that's just a little trick I use to just do it real quick because it cools off pretty quick and your needle gets stuck in there but I have done that it's not quite focused like I'd like but uh, there we go there's our railing back rail fit in there much better when I cleaned them out now if that uh, that railing looks dirty that's intentional I've weathered that and uh, coated it with some matte finish so that's yeah I weathered it up a little bit uh, as I have the whole building but uh, yeah that's uh, that's supposed to look like that now we'll uh, let's get this put in and now we have our steps installed on the side of the building okay we're getting close to the end now I've got uh, two uh, two wall brackets one on either end and this will uh, these go in here and then I've got wall caps that go on top of that and if in there's something like so and then we'll put a roof in and uh, um, then about the only, the only thing we got left to do is to put the front awning on so uh, let's get this done now we're getting the roof supports on and uh, or the overhang uh, for the docks so we'll uh, we'll get these things on then we'll put the uh, get the roof put on there the overhang and should be done with it now once again uh, we've got some little holes here in the uh, the supports here we've got paint on them so the hole is just a little bit too small so I'm just going to have to kind of make it a little bit bigger here so that we can get it in there it doesn't take much just a, just a twirl or two I don't want to drill a big hole and here is the complete build of our uh, low relief uh, background uh, building commissary uh, not too sure if I'm going to decal or not. I kind of like it without the decals. Uh, but we're going to take it out there and take a look at it and see what it looks like on the layout. So there's the kit. Not hard to do. Uh, like I said, I did some extra things. You know, did the doors down here. I've got me a, a platform here in the uh, in the back where, uh, you know, I can put personnel or goods or forklift, uh, you know, service industry, make it look like they're doing something in there. So... And I might do something with some kind of window treatments there because if I light this thing up, it's going to glow like a nuclear reactor. So uh, that's what uh, that's what it looks like so far. So I tell you, what, let's go uh, let's go put it on the layout and see what it looks like. 